Hey guys, welcome to another week of Segway Magic. This week we are talking about our summer read watch playlist things. This topic is weird for me because I'm filming it on the winter solstice. I'm not entirely sure if this is meant to be like a list of things that we are planning on doing this summer slash winter if you're me, or if it's like a list of things that we turn to during summer slash winter to... I, I don't know. I don't know. If it's the second one, my go-to during summer is the day after tomorrow because nothing cools you down faster than watching a movie about an ice age. Weirdly for me during winter I tend to read a lot of books that are set during summer, I mean partly it's because that's when they come out because Northern Hemisphere dictates everything of ever, but I do tend to read an awful lot of like fluffy beach reedy type stuff during the middle of winter. Let's start with talking about what I'm going to read during this winter and I'm going to focus exclusively on the things that are coming out in the next few months because we don't have like a thousand years to talk about all the things that I'm actually going to read. Number one, Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. This comes out in August. I have been waiting for it to come out since like 2012. Oh my god. It has been the most ridiculously long wait. I am going to have to reread The Diviners before it comes out because I have no idea what happened in that book anymore. No idea at all. Number two, The Boy Most Likely To by Huntley Fitzpatrick, which is the sequel to My Life Next Door. I'm pretty damned excited about this. I loved the characters who are going to be the focus of the second book and I just, I need it to come out right now. Although now I have an excuse to reread this one first. So maybe I'll just do that while I wait for it to come out. Number three, Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane, which is the first book in a new series set in a world where the Library of Alexandria did not get destroyed and oh my god, I need that like I need air. Number four, The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. I would read Patrick Ness's shopping list, so obviously this is on my list. And number five, The Sacred Lies of Minnow Bly by Stephanie Oakes. I already have this one pre-ordered. Everyone on my Goodreads seems to have been reading it in the past few weeks, and I am like crazy excited about reading it. Although I still think it's a bit weird that in a book where the main character loses her hands, the front cover has a girl holding something on it. So it's like it's got hands on the front of the book, and they're, you know, attached to the rest of her, but in the story she has no hands. I think that's a little bit weird. Moving on to what I'm planning on watching this winter. I am mostly planning on watching things for Snark Squad because I am like perpetually behind with everything. So Dawson's Creek, Supernatural, Doctor Who will be very high on my list of things to watch to try and create more backlog than we currently have. In addition to that, I'm going to try and finish off a bunch of things on Netflix that I started watching and haven't finished yet. So Daredevil, I think I'm like two episodes into that. I think I've seen four episodes of the new season of Orange is the New Black and I just I don't have time at the moment to watch anymore and I really 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 want to start watching Sensei because I've seen amazing amazing gift sets on Tumblr and it looks phenomenal and I just I need it but I have no time. My playlist for winter is twofold. There are the songs that I'm playing and then there's like the games that I'm playing. In terms of music, I expect it's going to remain very much the same as it has for the past month and it will just basically be the Eurovision 2015 album featuring all 40 songs, a couple of Taylor Swift songs, and Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon because that song is like the only thing that gets me out of bed some mornings. I just, I love it, I love it. It is basically my favourite song of ever now. Games is basically one thing and one thing only, and that is Lego Jurassic World, which covers all four Jurassic Park movies. I've talked a lot before about how much I love the Lego games, and this one is no exception. It's kind of terrifying when a Lego Velociraptor, like, jumps out at you unexpectedly, but you can beat them off because, you know, the game is designed for small children and nobody ever dies. And I am really enjoying this game. I've played through the first three movies, and I'm working on the new one. And then, obviously, you go back and you replay everything to collect all the collectibles and unlock all the things and buy all the stuff and do all the side quests. So I expect that's going to take me quite a while to get through, but I have high hopes for doing that by the end of winter, except for maybe the timed challenges, because I really suck at those, especially when they involve driving. Don't forget to make your own video on the topic posted on Saturday using the hashtag SegwayMagic on Twitter or Tumblr. We will find it and put it into a roundup post. Murray, I can't wait to hear your thoughts about like actual summer because I am freezing my ass off right now. I love all your faces and I'll see you soon. Bye. He said, Shut up and dance with me.